We've been working on quantum for almost as long as we've been here. You can go back to 60 years ago when, uh, with the invention of the atomic clock through to the superconducting materials that we work on now that support many quantum technologies through to the test and evaluation that we do for many companies to give them the confidence that their technologies will be able to reach market and create value for society. Major economies across the globe are investing in quantum technologies and here in the UK we must do as well if we're to keep up with the technology race and there is huge societal and economic impact that will come from quantum technologies. The purpose of the MPL Quantum Programme is to bring all the capability of the National Physical Laboratory and its work on quantum to support the objectives of the National Quantum Technology Programme. We are partners in many of the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund quantum technology programme. So we have a large number of projects where generally we're not the lead organisation, but we are a partner delivering that test and evaluation capability. In the uh, Quantum Materials Group, we develop and apply measurement capability for the characterization of a broad range of quantum materials by using state-of-the-art scanning probe microscopy and spectroscopy methods. In the Quantum Electrical Metrology Group, we work on sophisticated standards to realise electrical units. Quantum mechanical effects are, involve fundamental physics, which is reproducible and uh, well understood, and uh, this way that you can create measurement scales which are robust and reliable. We can also um, apply some of our capabilities in characterising quantum devices and then offer them more broadly to people to help with product development where people are trying to exploit quantum devices um, for uh, applications in computing or communication. So the work we're doing in my team um, is about supporting academia and industry in their attempt to sort of commercialise and take the quantum technologies from the lab to the real world. What you saw in the lab is a dilution refrigerator. So this is a, essentially a big refrigerator that allows us to cool devices down to very nearly to absolute zero, so just above absolute zero. And this allows us to test superconducting devices and superconducting, what's known as superconducting qubits, the superconducting quantum bits, which are the building blocks of quantum processors, which is all these new processors that are at the heart of any quantum computer. So in a regular computer, you have a, a, you know, a central processing unit. In a quantum computer, you have a quantum processing unit. Um, and this new facility that we're setting up now is tailor-made for that. So it's really a state-of-the-art facility, not just with the refrigerator, but also with all the associated instrumentation. At NPL, we have the only operational optical clocks in the UK. Um, and so this is giving us the, a unique advantage to be making uh, measurements, both fundamental physics, um, but also a test and evaluation facility for um, other companies to compare against our extremely accurate and traceable frequency standards. We're part of the Quantum Technologies for Fundamental Physics program and we're part of a project called QSNet where we're setting up a network of optical clocks which we're using to test fundamental physics at unprecedented levels and we're searching for variations in fundamental constants which our very very accurate optical clocks might be able to detect. I'm using these uh, things called optical microresonators, which are small pieces of glass in which light goes round and round in a circle many, many times, up to a million times, and that allows a very large amount of light to be stored in a very small space. It can be used for detecting extrasolar Earth-sized planets via spectroscopy. Frequency combs also have many other applications including dual comb trace gas spectroscopy for airport security and hydrogen fuel monitoring, health monitoring and semiconductor manufacturing. So the equipment currently working on is the London Paris interferometer, which is part of the London Paris fiber links, which we use for um, to perform um, frequency comparison of different clocks in different countries. The work that we do will definitely improve the measurement capabilities, so that will give industries better instruments and better measurement capabilities for their needs. One of the things that we have been successful at doing in, in the past is using the technology and the uh, capabilities that we've developed in research projects surrounding quantum metrology and applying them to industrial challenges. 
um, for instance, um, helping people with electrical measurement problems that are very challenging to solve with traditional technology. And the things that we've discovered in a very sophisticated kind of top level quantum metrology programs can be rolled out to industry. Within the quantum program, this characterization plays a fundamental role because it gives industrial partners the confidence that the performance of their material or material-based product or process is what they expect it to be. What we have been using this instrument for is to verify the positional accuracy of implanted ions. These ions are implanted in a deterministic manner and the ion species that are implanted are relevant to quantum technology applications because these implanted ions can be uh, used as quantum bits of information for quantum computing and emit photons one by one for quantum communications. So the UK government has invested significant sums into developing quantum technologies. One of those is to develop secure communication systems. Secure data systems need to be certified and that certification relies on a trusted, independent evaluator. And this is where NPL, who is independent of industry, can provide a service. We are doing three things. We're working with academic groups, mainly with universities in the UK and around the world, and we're helping them with specific measurement problems. We're working with companies, and again, typically that work is all more applied, so they can help them you know, develop new products or validating products they've already developed. But then we're also often working on advisory roles, so because we're ultimately owned by the UK government, we are also involved in things like advising the government and various government departments. And last but not least, I should say, we're also more and more involved in things like standardizing quantum technologies and again, taking from the lab to more like a firm footing and commercial products, which involves you know, international standards. All of these things that sort of comes with an actual product. I've always been interested in quantum and so it's nice to see how it's developing. It's also nice to in interact with all the industrial partners who are trying to build a business in this area. So many aspects of uh, technologies that we completely rely on in our everyday lives, be that uh, satellite navigation or synchronisation of energy networks, um, these all re rely on very precise time and frequency signals. And so by developing atomic clocks and being able to generate more precise and accurate signals, we can actually have a huge impact on a big range of technologies. One of the important activities within the NPL quantum program is to build relationships with organisations around the UK um, to build new partnerships and uh, extend some existing partnerships to make sure that the capability of NPL is available to all our partners uh, where they need it as well as when they need it. I'm really proud that we were involved in the first quantum uh, standard in quantum communications and it's for characterising components for secure quantum communications. And our international role is really critical here as well because we work with the US, with Canada and many other nations to agree those international standards. Yeah.